ドクターガオーなんちゃって What is going on you two? This is the last musketeer and welcome to part 16 of the Ark Knights free to play progression series. So since this one is going to be mainly based on what the current event is, I'm going to start out with doing some pulls from my account. Now, it wasn't going to go too deep into this banner in particular, but I didn't actually need to because I really was looking for one specific operator. Now, both of them, obviously, good options but I don't necessarily need either one of them and with the future banners coming up I should be saving did I do that no I absolutely did not but my plan was just to use the free rolls that you got daily and also the tin pull that you get for the start of the event so going in I had high hopes you know my luck had been pretty good up until this point uh, but no dice on this one I ended up getting a whisper rain copy which Ironically, didn't even realize that I had Whispering in the first place, which well, I guess I should be starting to level her up because she's actually pretty good, uh, especially in a lot of situations. So, now that I have that, I can uh, go forward <laughs> with that information, I guess, and, and try to work on my next medic. But, I was in Discord streaming my pulls and streaming some other people's pulls as well. So, you know what? I felt like maybe I should do another one and so I decided to and did pull a six star now it was the very next pull so ideally it would have been better for me to save and just use the free rolls that I got per day and I would have gotten a lin out of that it saved a little bit of resources but all in all I can't complain it was good and lin was actually the one that I was wanting more if I were to pull a six star out of it so I was very happy with the outcome of that uh, about 6,000 more I run them down, but being that I am a bit lacking in the caster department, it is a good option for me. So I decided to e-tour. The problem I'm having right now is no longer LMD at the moment. I'm actually very low on XP, so I didn't have enough to actually take her to 80 to go for this promotion. So I did a little bit of farming in IS-3 because I still have a decent amount to go before I'm finished with it completely. So I do have some options for gaining XP other than just your regular uh, daily stages. And the event, I think I still had a little bit more in the shop. So I was able to get enough to take it to 80. And now I'm going for the promotion. And I had just enough of the chip catalyst to actually form the chips. So we took Linda E2 as soon as possible. And I got to try her out. And you'll see a little bit of of it in the next stages obviously if I had her masteries up a little more it'd be a lot better she does some pretty decent damage and she's got some good coverage range and I think honestly with the way her s2 works it could be really good for helping out uh, for the survival of your team it's not going to be something massive but it does help in the long run which is a kind of a cool effect I do like the way she set up so Moving on now to the actual stages of the event, we're going to start off with the boss stage of the first part, not the EX stage. We'll go into those after and show you the challenge mode uh, because this one was very interesting. This boss itself, fairly annoying, and I didn't really know what I was getting into. I think this was my first attempt. So from a look at the map and from what people had been talking about in the Discord, I had an idea that there were duplicates of the boss. The boss would go into like a clone version of itself. So I decided to put a lot of aerial units, someone good for dealing with a lot of damage very quickly like Thorns. Uh, ideally, probably not the best option to place him facing down here. Uh, maybe I could have put him in the lower section and had him do a little bit more work there, along with Mudrock. Uh, probably, you know, in hindsight, it, it, it would be a good option, but I don't necessarily need it because I'm not going to be farming the stage in particular, uh, so I'm not too worried about an auto-deploy, but with Mustima there to help slow the enemies that are coming out as they're very, very fast, uh, a lot of spawns coming in, which I think is kind of a bad mechanic. While it's not necessarily the worst thing ever that they could have done, it is a kind of um, bad option just because it kind of promotes having a really strong uh, way of dealing with a boss, like someone like Posey or Schwarz, you know, maybe Milinar. If you don't have great options for it, you're going to have a hard time holding. 
unless your account is one of those in-game ones or you just have a lot of luck with some really strong defenders, anything like that, then I don't necessarily see it as being something that viable uh, for smaller accounts. But I do think overall I kind of got lucky with the way I ended up doing the CM mode for the EX stage. Um, and as we get into that, you'll see it's a little scuffed, but it did work out pretty easily, pretty handily. I didn't have that hard of a time doing it. But that just about wraps up the boss stage from the original part. And, you know, in between this and waiting for the EX stages to come out, I just did a little bit of IS-3 farming. A um, bunch of farming for LMD and, and trying to farm a lot of Agaton. I think by the end of this event, I had probably around... 50 Akaton, and as you saw earlier when I actually e 2 Ling, or when I took her to skill 7, rather, I had 3 at the start of that, and then used all 5, the last 2 that I'd gotten, uh, to actually take her to that. So, I did farm that stage quite a bit, um, and then after that I farmed some Manganese just to get a little bit more of that as well. But moving on to the EX stages, this one is basically the invis guys hit a little bit harder because they have increased attack and the way i had this one set up is not very optimal this is not a great clear by any means very scuffed i did it a lot better as i went through uh, later on just when i was trying to do one of the metals uh, i did it without even the first part of this breaking down at all because it was not that bad when you don't make really bad decisions i think overall though just with the amount of damage they do off the invis break, they break the roadblock in basically two hits, so there's not necessarily any way you could stop them from doing that without deploying something on the high ground tiles that can actually either uh, negate the damage or, uh, you know, maybe like an Arketo for the shield off deployment would be probably really nice, but she is a long recovery time. Also, I'd imagine the people that are Sukanogi fans might be actually really happy with the way this one turned out, though I have not leveled her at all, and I don't know many people that have. So, uh, it wasn't really an option for me to use there, but... We got it done just by putting Mudrock at the bottom and letting the shield tank the damage. She does nearly go down just because of the extra damage that they do, but we were able to get it done. Nothing too bad there, and my first showing of Lin actually getting to do something was at the back end of that stage. She does decent damage, and I think with the uh, full mastery, it'll be really nice. Now, this one is the most scuffed run of this entire thing, uh, because I just went in and grabbed some random stuff, and I didn't think about the fact that they were adding roadblocks to this map, that they would add it to make everything in range of taking damage. So, when I saw where the roadblocks are, I knew I was going to be in for a little bit of a rough time, because unless I can keep them all healed enough, uh, to deal with this, I'm going to have no way of actually stomping them um, and getting my deployments out in time because I can't just keep dropping defenders in front of them uh, right after. I don't have the DP, I don't have the timing for that. Um, if I had brought maybe a Contabile as well, I might have had enough DP to drop my range tiles and then my defender at the same time to kind of negate that, but there was just so much going on, it was a little bit rough to actually get that whole process set up. So basically you're going to see me dropping a bunch of stuff that just gets taken out pretty quickly. Uh, Tank's Altar is definitely an MVP here in helping negate some of the damage there, but as you can see those, those spell casters or whatever they're called, I'm not exactly sure, do a ton of damage and they will wipe out your squad very very quickly if you're not careful uh, so mudrock did go down there i'm using tex alter to stall a little bit more then i drop blaze blaze of course goes down because the guy is just walking up top but with her trait allowing her to uh, not take damage after she drops to 50 percent for a few seconds is very very useful there in holding just long enough uh, but these guys just spread out and go to the roadblocks after so technically if you wanted to to set up a little bit better you could probably have things break the roadblocks first and then start placing at the back tile so they can get actual clean damage in um, it's just very very rough of a setup to do beforehand so if you want to do it beforehand uh, by all means, go for it. It's just not going to be that fun if you don't have a lot of fast setup or fast clearing options. But moving on to the next one, EX3CM is going to just take out some of the tiles that would normally be deployable. And this one 
realistically, those tiles being gone is not necessarily a problem. It's not going to make too big a deal uh, in the overall process of this, but I did goof up a little bit whenever I dropped uh, Thorns down at the bottom. Ordinarily, I'd probably drop him up and to the right one. That way I can hit the full gate as they're coming out, and then I can drop someone like Monster or Mudrock in front of him to keep him from really taking damage, and they can deal with that. And then the backside just have someone like Blaze, but I didn't also bring in Blaze, so I'd have to have, you know, either either Cal or Mudrock on the bottom there. But with Gnosis set up here, he's going to do a lot for taking out a lot of these enemies. Of course, Cal has no problem taking out the rest of these, but with the guys with the Invis walking through the mid, Monster is a great option for dealing with them because he is incredibly tanky, especially with the sp skill active, it's going to make it a lot better uh, because they do dish out a ton of damage. But having someone on the bottom side to make sure they can't set up the speed boosting things is a must on this. If you can't burst them beforehand, you've got to make sure they cannot set up properly or you're going to be in for a nightmare. Of course, the ones at the top would have been taken out a little bit better if I had thorns deployed where I wanted them but it didn't necessarily matter in the long run. We still ended up getting it done. Moving on to the next CM stage, EX4. This one is just another one where they're taking out some of the tiles. I don't necessarily mind these. Uh, there's not a whole lot of mechanic change to it. It's just trying to make it a little more annoying on you. But if you have good holding options, these first two are, are not going to be a problem anyways. And uh, once again, I threw down Gnosis. I need to try to keep him alive long enough to get his skill off so that I can try to do as much damage as I can in this part of the lane. But I pop his skill, get rid of him, and I just have Tex Alter slowly nuking with a borrowed support Meteorite. Because Meteorite is a fantastic option for dealing with the top side here. Any artilleryman is going to do pretty well. Or anything you can use that has the range to get there uh, to take them out in time because once they start getting to your lineup you're basically going to lose everything you have because they do so much damage so you have to be very very careful they have some decent range if they had gotten on the stairs and in range of monster he would have gone down way too quickly and then it becomes a war of attrition after just trying to hold that lane but like i said meteorite was a great option for dealing with them somebody with good range like that is a great option every time but we're going to take a little bit of a break from these stages for a second to show some of the pulls that i did for a couple of other people in the discord so this first one is for jr and he only wanted me to do the tin pull because he was trying to go for fire whistle and well we end up getting her in the first one so very very nice and we swap over to crim now i was going to play the audio from the discord but for some reason it was very very messed up i didn't have my audio I didn't have half of the people in the Discord audio, even though they were talking through it, it would cut in and out half the time. But there was like a couple of members of it that were in there at the time talking that you could hear every word they were saying. So it was just a very weird experience and I don't know what was going on with OBS in that sense. But this pull worked out a little bit better. We ended up getting Fire Whistle and also a six star. So very nice pull. I don't know if we were <laughs> exactly going for it. I don't remember. But I know Fire Whistle was one of the main ones that Krim wanted. So not only did we get her once, we got her two or maybe three times. I don't exactly remember. And speaking of getting the featured five star, I don't think I have got one in the last like three or four banners. Very sad to say the least, but you know, at least they'll be in the pool later on and I can potentially pull one. But we did get him a Chungus at the end of the day so not a bad pull not Lin but you know it is a decent operator and I think he gets a bit of a bad rap it seems like people don't like him as much as I would imagine they would because he's actually pretty decent I've seen some stuff on him he is kind of nutty at times but Krim decided to go for another tin uh, so we did no real luck there but he did get a new five star out of it and I did do pulls for one other person Dastro but for some reason it only recorded like half of it and only got like one or two of the pulls uh, but either way it was a bunch of sadness for some reason this is like the second or third time I pulled for Dastro and I just can't seem to pull anything he actually wants I didn't get him tanks altar last time I got him penance 
I believe, or some off banner, I can't exactly remember. Maybe it was Golden Glow. Uh, but that was a little while back, so I am a bit cloudy on my memory on that. But once again, Dasho, I do apologize. Probably best that I don't pull for you in particular. It just seems to be cursed at that point. But I do wish you the best of luck in getting Lin or Chungus or whoever you're going for this banner but moving on to the next CM stage so this one was not too bad it's another one of those situations where it's just got the invis guys that do way too much damage and so my idea was to try to borrow passenger and nuke him down well that didn't quite work out he survived with a tad bit of health uh, so honestly the better option is just to leave Mudrock at top let him break through and just finish him off a little bit later on but watching them all walk through and just one shot my operators is the most annoying thing I've had to deal with but if you can catch them at just the right time with Gnosis after they get the first hit they won't be able to go invis again and he can pop them off with help of somebody else before uh, they get through but as you can see this one is going through breaking the roadblock and will meet up with Mudrock a little bit later on. I don't know why I dropped Suzer in there. I literally just sent her in to get sacrificed. A bit of a bully move on my part. Sorry Suzer. But moving on to EX6. So this one basically it just made the really tanky guys extra tanky. So what is the best way to dealing with that? Well ignoring most of the defense so what I decided to do was just use Cal and monster for the true damage and then try to use a bunch of casters like passenger to try to cluster them while they're being held by a three blocker and then just nuke them now Gnosis is a good option as well but he only hits a certain amount and the freeze can only do so much damage uh, so somebody like passenger or some type of chain caster who's going to do uh, a lot of bounces somebody like pudding would probably be a pretty good option here and as you can see on bottom blaze is about to go down because I was not paying attention to that and then <laughs> luckily I dropped perfumer in time but the main problem the main source of damage that I have to look out for in this stage in particular is coming from the middle gate because it has the spellcasters that will absolutely nuke your squad so what I decided to do was drop Mastima and then just use Lin as a little bit of bait because once they break that shield runner they will get stunned so I use that to get just enough time to take out the spellcasters. Of course, Mastima does go down as well, but that's fine. They are gone, cleaned up by blue poison, and then Passenger nukes the cards on the top side. So that one was fairly simple, fairly straightforward. And now we move on to EX7CM. So for this one, the Sand Voyager has increased health, and that is the big carts that are going to pick up the passengers along the way. So Ideally, if you can take them out fast, great option. If you can't, you're going to have to stall for a little bit of time, but they do require like four block to actually do uh, any type of blocking with. So you're going to have to play it a little smarter, do something like uh, true damage or somebody that can actually hold for a little bit. Somebody like Passenger is a great option as well because there are a lot of enemies moving through. So if you can lock down any of them before they get into the actual vehicle or if you can just burst the vehicle with the help of him or someone like Gnosis then it is going to be much easier and that's basically what I did and I used the true damage from monster and then nuke them down between Gnosis and passenger now right side is going to be mud rock and blaze doing most of the work and then Mastima because of the slow now if I didn't have the Mastima slow this would have been a little bit harder uh, for the right side because I didn't have enough damage overall so I really needed something to buy me some time there and as you can see I almost leaked another one Suzerain was able to help Contabile clean him up though um, and then after that I'm just taking out this left side once again with passenger and monster and it is a pretty quick clear so now an important upgrade that I've been putting off for quite some time has finally come along. So I ended up having just enough of the class catalyst once again to take up another 
E2 six star. So I decided to go with Saria because Saria has been waiting in my roster for quite some time and she is a fantastic operator who's going to help me massively in the future. So I'm taking her to 60 so I can get the module. I'm going to probably get the one that gives me the extra heal percentage. The 15% is actually really nice. The damage resistance one could be really good, especially with the fact that she stacks defense the longer that she's out up to a, I believe, 20%. Uh, so that could be really nice, but I don't necessarily know that I'll need that more than I would the heal in particular because normally when you have her holding it's just for the healing and the SP recovery as well for someone that's healed which is really really nice but she is going to be a nice addition that I don't quite have to a hundred trust. I've used her a decent amount over time just lately haven't been using her as much but now that I have her etude I'll be using her a lot more and I just have to wait for the hundred to get the module because I've already done the two mission requirements to actually get it. So another big massive improvement to my roster that I'm really really excited about and also I could not hold back with trying to get Aya because I do have Blemishine already but I was more so just hoping that I could roll the dice and get lucky enough to get it in the first 10. So all I did was roll the first 10 with my individuals and unfortunately got a Contabile pot, but that does max out my Contabile now, so the minus one DP cost is actually fairly useful. It's not going to be the biggest change, but it does help. But now, we move on to the most annoying stage um, I think I've seen in quite some time. Now this one didn't take me long to clear, luckily, but... I can see why it would be a massive problem and for a lot of rosters it is probably extremely rough. The two options you really have I think personally are just kind of stalling the boss on the right side by those three squares on the right. I think you could probably stall them pretty well there uh, because the delusions do fade away over time. Uh, so as long as you can get rid of that option then it's not so bad with the blocking. Uh, but if you can burst them down Maybe use something like Posey, Schwarz, um, in my case I use Milinar to help out a lot and then use my uh, true damage from Amia to actually uh, punch him down enough and even that wasn't quite enough damage because yeah, if I leveled them up more, had more masteries or something, it probably would have been fine uh, but I just used uh, basically the bare bones uh, requirement for getting uh, the true damage there. So it was enough in the long run and essentially what I'm doing here is I have Thorns facing right to do damage, not just from the first phase, he's going to basically take out the boss by himself, a little help from BP, but BP is mainly just there to take out the astral projection so that he doesn't create too many illusion, delusion spaces or actually teleport because that would cause a, too much of a problem. So Thorns facing right side, so when the second phase goes and he can no longer block it, he is going to do extra damage to help me out. Uh, Mudrock is going to solo the left side, and because you do have minus one block, anything that walks up on the top level is not going to actually attack any of your medics or anything, uh, so they are free to sit up there, and you basically have, for me, Gabby Alter holding that lane where she has the four block with her skill active, and then I have monster facing down to do the true damage to deal with the tankier guys because if not you just don't have enough to actually take them out and it is kind of RNG based I got pretty lucky with mine so I was able to do it so early that I didn't have a lot of the big guys spawn uh, because if too many of the tanky ones spawn you just can't take them out without a strong caster up there uh, so basically when I get this first group of enemies out when it gets to 19 then I can activate thorn skill the second time to let him go ahead and finish off off the boss to start the second phase. Now this is where everything gets a little more hectic and the reason I have Milinar because he's going to be on the bottom side with the bottom projection. I'm gonna throw Gavial down here to heal him up just to make sure he does not go down. I have Amia for the true damage on bottom to help out though she doesn't do a whole lot but it is enough to help. Now one downside to this run in particular is that I forgot to activate Perfumer skill and that is the main thing that keeps thorns alive here and since I didn't activate it He does end up going down which causes a major problem uh, Because I thought I was going to lose just based on the fact that I no longer had him there for help but 
luckily I did do quite a bit of damage. Um, Eleanor at the bottom is going to do most of the work. Amia stays alive for quite some time so that she's able to get the full activation off and then she does go down after the full duration of her skill. So now at this point I need to use Mustima up top somewhere to preferably slow down all the extra enemies that are running through because that's going to be the deciding factor of whether or not I can finish this and that's why I think Mustima is such a good option for this and why she's so underrated in a lot of different situations uh, but I'm just going to spam Tech Salter at the bottom to try to take out the one and even though there are a lot of slots a lot of delusion slots where the enemies are spawning I'm not too worried because I do have Milinar bottom and he will be ready to activate his skill uh, not once but probably twice by the end of it I think I have to activate him two times at bottom uh, but as you can see the boss is almost down I throw down BP to actually try to help out a little bit Tech Salter does quite a bit of damage BP does well next to nothing but <laughs> I'm not too worried. As long as I can do it before he gets to the stairs, we're going to be just fine. And that is luckily what ends up happening because I use thorns to finish off and then Tex Alter for a little bit of extra damage to help him out. And once it is down, I can retreat both of them. And now I just have to deal with the top lane. So at this point, I've got Gavial's skill active. I've got Perfumer up top to heal to make sure she doesn't go down. Mudrock's just fine on the left side. The pure damage from Monster is making short work of anybody that's too tanky that might end up getting past Gaviel. So now, with Amiya's help as well, and once the skill is ready, I will activate that. Uh, Gnosis, I'm going to activate his skill every chance I get. And then Mastima, when hers is up, is going to be perfect timing for the massive rush that is walking through here at the end. This was the scary part because of how many were coming through, but I knew if Mistima was ready, I would have no problem. Takes Alter for a little bit more arch damage just to do a little bit of helping there. And as you can see, they make pretty short work of the tough enemies on the top lane. So, Milnor in the spot that he's at actually does take out the guys that give the speed boost and take out those batteries as well. That's why he's in such a good position there and why I didn't want to get rid of him up after I got passed by the boss. That's why it's good to leave him in that spot because otherwise, you know, you're gonna have to position him in a place where I guess at top facing bottom, he could probably do about the same thing but because of the way I had a position, the top boss was actually moving one tile behind the other. That's why I wanted to do bottom instead. I thought it'd be a better option, maybe overall, just because I'm not as scared of the top as I am the bottom. I am curious, though, how everyone ended up doing this. Uh, what was your best option? What did you find... Uh, to be the best way to clear this because I feel like for the ads if somebody has someone like passenger he'd be fantastic for this as well the ad clearing would be really no problem horns also probably pretty nice for this but I'm just really curious what people use because like I said I don't have a lot of great options uh, for bursting a boss especially in aerial boss most of the times I use thorns to do as much damage as I possibly can and uh, that's mainly uh, all I have to work with but I also went through and decided to get all the medals and just for anyone that may be wondering in case they hadn't seen it I was confused on this as well they posted it to the like official discord probably but it says EX3 this one is actually EX4 for the fragmented formations medal so do it on EX4 that's also where you get the trim it's just a typo uh, saying three and then trim on four uh, so that's why it had me confused. I only ran it a couple times, luckily, but for those of you that might have done it multiple times, it's very annoying. Hopefully, they refund some sanity so we can do a little more farming with that since it did waste a lot, probably, for some people. But we are at the end of the video, so as I do with every video, I show you what my roster is looking like currently, and we have got a pretty nice one. Man, there's so many E2s to look at now that it's just so exciting. It's been quite a journey, and I've loved every minute of it. And I thank you, especially those that have been sticking around since the start or have been watching the whole thing. I, I appreciate it so much. And even though I don't upload as much, I, I still love every minute of it. And it's just there's not as much content for me to put out for the progression in particular because most of the stuff that are is in the game the regular stuff I've already cleared and so it comes down to events and farming some big upgrades 
and it, it, it's been a great journey and I'm still loving it. I'm going to continue doing it. It's just not as much that I can put out because I could put out some other content on it. Uh, and we'll get to that eventually. And I say eventually every time. I know I, it's, it's probably annoying to hear at this point. But I do promise it's just a lot going on. So we take it a little bit at a time. Though I do like this new character that we get with the event. It's actually really, really cool artwork. And... I do like having an artillery man. I do have Shiryuki. I just don't have a lot of uses for her for the most part. I feel like um, I have ways of covering what she would normally do. And so I haven't really had a chance to use her to her fullest. And I haven't used her in quite some time. So hopefully I can get some nice like six star artillery men at some point to work up. Uh, Ifrit, of course, is going to be one that I really should stop wasting time with and just go ahead and do. Um, I'm just going to have to wait for the dual chips as well on hers. Other than that, I know I should probably work up some of the medics. Reed would be a nice one just because of the extra damage and she's kind of fun to use. A shining just for the defense would be nice for the... Just the overall just survivability would be really good and would help... Further in the future, when I actually have a buffing team, uh, Dorothy, I'm waiting on the module. The module's fantastic, but I have not got to experience it yet because it is not released here yet. Uh, that's going to be a nice, nice upgrade because I love using Dorothy as much as I can. As she's just, she makes things a little too easy at times because of the massive amount of damage and the area that she can deal with. Uh, so it's going to be crazy to see the module. Uh, but as far as content that I need to do when I'm building OP for these future banners is going to be just going through and trying to take out as many of these side events as I possibly can. Because I do have quite a bit of OP left. And showing where I'm at in the actual IS-3, I didn't realize for the longest time that there was actually difficulty levels. So now I'm working those up, flying through those. But I'm already at 74, so I only have 21 levels to go. So the efficiency is a little bit wasted at this point. <laughs> but it's going to help uh, for the future. For the medals, I hadn't really checked them out until now. Uh, but they're really not that hard to get. I think for the most part, it's just all about clearing over time. You're going to have plenty of time to do it unless there is a time limit on it. Which there might have been some that I've already done that had a time limit. Either way... We are cruising through it. That one's almost done. Getting the metal set for the last one. And normally, like I said in previous videos, I'm not too big on getting medals. I think at times it's a bit of a hassle. But, you know, if I'm already close to them, I might as well finish them off. So that's what I've been doing lately. I think I've got the last three now, possibly. But Highmore is a character that's really good in IS-3. And I got to see her demonstrated in one of the streams on discord so she is really nice i'll probably level her up just in a little bit just to finish off my is3 uh, especially when they add more tiers but that's going to do it for me guys i'll see you in the next one peace